So today I'm going to share God's message titled, How to be saved, Surely Saved. Nicodemus, at night, he went to see Jesus. He was at a certain position. He was a Pharisee. So he was afraid by getting all the critics from his colleagues. So he went to see Jesus at night. And Nicodemus, he wanted to ask Jesus something and start his own conversation. But Jesus, Jesus knew what he wanted to know. So Jesus directly told him, if you're not born, you cannot be saved. That was actually the point of the answer that Nicodemus wanted to get. And Nicodemus later, he told Apostle John his experience about uh, this conversation with Jesus. So John chapter 3, verse 14, 15, he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Moses lifted up the serpent. So whoever saw that snake up on the stick, they lived again. So the snake that was lifted up referred to Jesus Christ. So this is how we can be saved. So we have to take the idea of being saved from this event. So this man is named Steve. He was beaten by a snake, poisonous snake, but he survived. And he had a bizarre hobby. He was raising 17 venomous snakes, including cobras and rattlesnakes. What's even more terrible, he extracts poison directly from venomous snakes and injects the poison into his body. Snake considered to be scary and disgusting animal in the world. Because of the deadly poison in the snake's teeth. In the worst case, the bitten part can be cut off or even life-threatening to the human, Steve Rudwin injects snake venom into his body. So he had been injecting snake venom once a week for 25 years. He's an incredible guy, right? So he took the venom out of those several different kinds of uh, venom snake and he injected that venom inside his body every week. And there was a man named Brian Rush. And he was really curious about this guy who injects the venom inside his body once a week. So, some of the scientists, they want to get this antibody against the venom of the snake. So that's why they experimented many things on different animals. But this time, they wanted experiment on human. So Brian Roche watched these videos, Steve, and thinking that he might have antibodies. So this guy went to Steve. Through the analysis of Steve Rodwin's blood, Brian finds 35 kinds of antibodies against snake venom in him. 35 different kinds of antibodies against, you know, the snake's venom. So he had him taking, injecting the, into his body, those different types of venomous snake's venoms. So now his body contains 35 different types of antibodies against venom of snake. 
It was named the Rudwin Library after him. It is also analyzed as T. Rudwin may have survived thanks to those antibodies. Steve Rodwin, the man who injected snake venom for 25 years. So this man, Steve Rodwin, has been injecting most types of venomous snakes around the world until now. So he's, he has antibodies. So let me ask you a question. Who have beaten up by all those kind of sins in the world? It is Jesus. Hebrews 4.15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus is the one, the only one who was injected by all those sinful natures around the world, but he has no sin. So that's why we can look up to Jesus. So let's go back to the story of snake. Snake antibody antidote using these antibodies is being developed. Thanks to him, uh, an avenue for snake antidote research was opened. So now you might think, we can, we can imagine that anyone who got bitten by a venomous snake will go to this guy for help, right? So in every different uh, hospital has this sign. And for us, the only person, the only one who has this antibody is Jesus. They could not save themselves from the fatal effect of the poison in their wounds. God alone was able to heal them yet they were required to show their faith in the provision which he had made. They must look in order to leave. So when Nicodemus went to see Jesus and he figured out the truth and the answer that he had, has to look at Jesus only. So that's why Nicodemus told the story of Moses and this snake lifted up to John to write the uh, book of John. The soul pursed, pursed by seeing can endow with life only through the work route out upon the cross by the author of our salvation. So who doesn't know this kind of truth tries his best to be saved by his own power. But Bible talks about the only person who has all the antidotes against sin, who is Jesus. And book of Zechariah, you know, chapter four explains about these two trees, but there is one. And also there is a, in the, in the middle of the trees, there's a candlestick and two different tubes are connected to it. And Zechariah, when he saw this, this vision, then he asked uh, the angel of God and he got the answer. And in the work of God, humanity can originate nothing. No man can, by his own effort, make himself a light bearer of God. It was a golden oil emptied by the heavenly messengers into the golden tubes to be conducted from the golden ball into the lamps of the sanctuary that produced a continuous bright and shining light. So, through the power that comes from this tree, through the candlelight, only by that power, we can be saved. And also, we can save other people. We can help saving other people. So this book of Zechariah, 
God's angel explained everything that he saw in his vision to Zerubbabel. Zechariah 4, 6, he, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. God says, there is nothing you can do to save yourself, but only I, the Lord, creator, can give you the power. So when we want to spread the gospel to other people, the, the only person who experienced it can only share this same gospel to other people. Not by people's strength, but only the power of God. So whoever experienced this in early ages, then can go out there and share his own experience. This is the wisdom. Not on the rock of human strength, but on Christ Jesus. The rock of ages was the church founded, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. The presence of God gives stability to his cause. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, is the word that comes to us. Psalm 146, 3. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah 30, 15. So I have been experienced, experiencing this so many times, I'm running God's mission and as well as this Saranam Musa Center. I have seen a lot of people who tried their best to cut down on their bad habits, but they couldn't. From the mental disease, from cancer, but they could not do it by their own power. However, by coincidence, God shows us the same, the example. And when we experience that example, then we can be saved. So when whoever sows that experience from other people, they have to understand, they have to receive, they have to obey, and they have to follow. So there are a lot of people in society who has big responsibilities, who has their own self-righteous. They don't know how to fall before Jesus. They don't know how to go to Jesus with their own weakness and sins. The power only comes when those kind of person, when we kneel before Jesus and give everything, show everything as we are. Only Jesus can save us. So to Zerubbabel, Jesus says like this, and that is a truth. It is the naked truth which, like a sharp, two edged sword, cuts both ways, arousing to spiritual life those who are dead in trespasses and sins. Men will recognize the gospel when it is brought to them in a way that, that is in harmony with God's purposes. So in February, next February, some evangelistic uh, uh, missionary group, they asked me to share the ideas and give a seminar about how to spread the gospel, the way to spread the gospel. And maybe I show my preface before then? No. Through my experiences, I can surely tell you that when I tell other people the way that I experience God, then that's the mission. That's the way that we have gospel. With what we have, with what we know, it's not. We have to take what God has shown us. God has made us experience. Through that power, through that experienced knowledge, experienced faith, we can only change other people through Jesus' power. All the people around the world, Jesus wanted to save, wants to save them. So this 
little girl servant, she knew it. But she could not do anything. So that's why she asked Naaman to seek for Eliza. So to Ethiopian, uh, you know, congressman, God sent Philip to him. So by seeing other people's experience and listening to their experience of being saved, people can open their hearts. So to Nicodemus, Jesus said this. At 4.12, nor is there salvation is any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No matter how we have much knowledge. No matter how much knowledge we have, no matter how much power we have, it doesn't matter. Only the power of Jesus and person who experienced Jesus in his life can tell the truth and spread the gospel to other people to believe. When Nicodemus heard what Jesus told him, everything that Jesus told him was against what he knew before, what he experienced and exercised before. So when Jesus died on the cross, Nicodemus finally realized. He recognized Jesus as a Messiah. And he stood in the front line and he started to spread in gospel to other people what he experienced. Especially this Seventh-day Adventist church is the remnant. It's the last church of the mankind. So we have a lot of different knowledges. We have to be humble. We have to walk the path, our ancestors' path. Not through controversy and discussion. Is a soul enlightened. We must look and live. Nicodemus received the lesson and carried it with him. He searched and the scriptures in a new way, not for the discussion of the theory, but in order to receive life for the soul. He began to see the kingdom of heaven as he submitted himself to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Only look at Jesus, which means look at cross. And this simple idea looking at Jesus and looking at the cross is so simple that man with a big knowledge, man with a lot of different knowledges cannot understand this. When Jesus taught this simple message to Nicodemus, and first he didn't understand. So when we want to get out of this power of Satan, and when we go to heaven, spiritual life from this earthly life, then we have to understand. We have to go through one path. That is Jesus. So, when we want to be detoxed, detoxificated, then we have to get antidote, which is Jesus. And every time Satan is trying to tempt us and giving us so much tests and trying to use our own emotions, trying to arouse our bad emotions and habits. But no matter what kind of obstacles that we face and Satan put before us, all we have to do is what? Call out the name of Jesus and follow his footsteps. We have to grab his own hands. It is Satan's constant effort to prevent the union and communion of the soul with Christ. The pleasures of the world, life's cares and perplexities and sorrows, the faults of others or your own faults and imperfections. To any or all of these, he will seek to divert the mind. It's not senseless. What Satan tells us is not senseless. 
sometimes it's just, it, that is the truth. But all we have to do is what? We shut our ears to the Satan. We all have to look at Jesus. Open our hearts to Holy Spirit. Satan uses our bad emotions, sadness, anger. So when we are in these kinds of environment, when we accept this kind of emotions inside our body and heart, then what happens? Nothing will happen good. So when Nicodemus heard what Jesus told him, it was, really, it was difficult for him to accept very simple truth because he knew a lot. And he had so much emotions with different ideas. Closely to study our emotions and give way to our feelings is to entertain doubt and entangle ourselves in perplexity. We are to look away from self to Jesus. This is the truth. No matter how many reasons that we have, we still have to forget about those reasons and look at Jesus. Let's look at this video clip. There was a, a call to rescue a dog that fell into a well. When they arrived at the scene, the dog was barely hanging from the wall of the well. The dog was very tired and trembling with fear. The dog couldn't stand against the wall for long and was sucked into the water. When the dog was in the water, it was struggling and barely sticking out its head. The dog tried to float in the water, but his body doesn't move. The dog, which had been locked in the well for a long time, was in a state of exhaustion. The dog has barely gotten out of the water and once again tried to hang on the wall of the well. The dog was struggling to withstand it. The sad eyes of the dog broke the hearts of the viewers. Rescue work has begun. The lifeguard is going into the well. When the lifeguard arrived at the bottom of the well, the dog approached itself to him. It was like a gesture to save himself, asking for saving. Rescue proceeded with ease due to dog's friendly behavior. The dog was put into a net and rescued safely. Persevering without giving up until the end led to the rescue. The dog? How was the dog saved? Because the dog looked up. The dog was struggling at his best to survive, trying to hang on the wall, but he couldn't. The firm saving power is to look up. Let us all look up to Jesus. Second Corinthians 3, 18, it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not being saved by other things, but only by Jesus' power. Just like when plant is going well, 
when it gets a lot of sunshine from above. So, what is left behind us when we look at Jesus? Change in our character. Change in our personality. When you get light from other sources, then you all have, all you are having is become arrogant. Become something else that Jesus want, wants us to be. But when we praise Jesus, when we give all our glories to Jesus and look up on the Jesus, then what happens? will change into a new being, Moses. God made Moses smite the rock to get the water to save his people. God gave Moses the tablets of law and commandments. During the fight with Amalek, when Moses held up his hands, Israelites prevailed. By God's power, Moses split the Red Sea. And this great man, Moses, what he did? Moses stands forth superior in wisdom and integrity to all the sovereigns and statesmen of earth. Yet this man claims no credit for himself, but points the people to God as a source of all power and wisdom. Where is there such a character among men of this age? More than any other great figures around the world, Moses was greater. But all he did was what? He, grew, he only glorified God. The person who, are saved, who is saved from the power of Jesus will only give this glory, all his glory, to Jesus only. Numbers 12.3 now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Moses is called man of humble. Don't you want to be man of humble? Lady of humble? We have been through with Many different experiences of showing our arrogance and pride. There was a there was a king named Ahaziah. He fell off the stairs. He got hurt. So he wanted to be saved. He wanted a doctor. And now he asked his one of his servants to call upon doctor. Second King, chapter one, two, he says, now Asia fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, go in inquire of Barzebub, the God of Akron. So when he was sick, this King Asia asked for help from pagan religion, Barzebub the God of Akron. So when Jesus was on this earth and trying to heal other people, then those Israel's leaders said to Jesus that Jesus' power was from Barzabah. Of course, it was totally wrong. The meaning of going into going and following Jesus' footstep and looking upon Jesus is totally different from what we know. And Second King verse chapter one verse four it says, "Now, therefore, thus says the Lord: You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die." So Elijah departed. So this was he was sentenced to death by Elijah from Jesus because he asked he asked his living and death to Barzabah instead of the creator God now Jesus actually taught his own disciples one prayer the Lord's prayer 
So when we study this Lord's Prayer a little bit closer, and Jesus, the Divine Master, ever exalted the name of His Heavenly Father, He taught His disciples to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And they were not to forget to acknowledge thine is the glory. So careful was the great healer to drag attention from himself to the source of his power. So this is how Jesus and why Jesus taught this Lord's prayer to his own disciples. This is the only way you can be saved when you, are, you fall down. What you have to do is look upon heaven and see Jesus. Seek help from above. This is the reason why God gave his disciple, God gives us the prayer today. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13, it says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So don't curl up on the wall. Stay where you are. Be what you are. Be who you are. But look upon me. I'll go to you. I'll give you the power to be saved. That's what Jesus is telling us right now. No matter how much knowledge we have about, even about Bible, there's nothing. It, can, it cannot save us. We have to use that knowledge from the Bible to exercise it into our lives. Then Jesus and God, of course, he can lay the rough down onto the earth and save us. But if you only try to experience a little portion of his power and try to go back to the world, that's not the true change will not going to will not happen in your life. There was one lady. She trusted her own knowledge. Even though she knew that God saved her. So uh, people who joined us last Tuesday, you guys all saw one pastor's wife. She had been so, she had been suffering from cancer and depressions, but she confessed herself that she lay off everything that she had, knowledge and pride and everything. And she decided to follow only Jesus, only cling on, cling to Jesus. And this is the testimony that she gave. Two gazi sengagi in Ninde, Sadan to Sengagul Lojuku, Hananim to Sengagul Lojusilte, Sadan Pion and Kodorago, Yesunim is on Tekago Purumion Tendago. So to keep Lodana, Cretoni, Kesok Pururago Rosso. 그래서 제가 그때부터 마음을 먹고 부르기 시작했는데 이렇게 부르면서 하루를 지나고 이틀을 지났는데 어 저, 전혀 생각하지 못한 거를 하게 됐어요. 그게 뭐였냐면 저희 남편한테 용서를 구해야겠다는 생각이 들었어요. 실은 제가 남편한테 용서를 받아 그러니까 제가 사과를 받아야 된다고 생각을 했었는데 반대로 제가 용서를 구해야겠다는 마음이 들었어요. 남편한테 전화를 걸어서 용서를 구했는데 어, 고개를 이렇게 숙여서 정말 진심으로 사과하고 싶어서 그렇게 사과를 했어요. 그리고 마음에 덩어리 하나가 쑥 빠지는 것 같았어요. 그리고 제 방에 올라가서 기도를 하고 있었는데 기도하려고 눈, 눈을 딱 감는 순간 제 앞에 십자가가 갑자기 상상이 됐어요. 너무 시커멓고 너무 끔찍했고 그걸 지고 오는 어떤 존재가 
온몸이 얻어 터져서 보기 너무 흉측했어요. 왜 이렇게까지 하셨지? 라는 생각이 들었어요. 근데 그 예수님의 십자가를 그날 본날 용서하기 힘든 저희 아빠가 생각이 났어요. 저희 아빠가 어떤 잘못을 하셨는데 저희가 엄마랑 저랑 피눈물을 흘리면서 용서를 했거든요. 근데도 그런 일이 반복됐을 때 여기 들어오기 전에 제가 폭발했어요. 이제까지 참아왔던 화가. 그래서 아빠한테 막 퍼붓 그랬는데 내가 아빠보다 더 심한 죄인이구나. 그래서 제가 아빠한테 또 용서를 구하게 됐어요. 그리고 아빠하고 화해를 하고 나니까 여기 있는 짐이 이번에 쑥 내려가는 거예요. 근데 여기 있다 보니까 저는 용서하려고 계획한 게 아무것도 없는데 또 엄마한테 용서를 구하게 되고 그런 일이 되면서 제 마음의 짐들이 막 내려지기 시작했어요. 근데 이렇게 할수 있었던 거는 여기서 원장님이랑 사모님이 가르쳐주는 거딱 하나 그거 했어요. 들어오는 내 생각은 다 틀리고 내 기분 자존심이고 뭐고 난다 틀리고 난 예수님 부를 거야. 그것만 했어요. 그것만 했는데 상상 못한 일이 막 자꾸 일어나는 거예요. 그리고 말씀이 다시 읽혀지기 시작하는 거예요. 근데 말씀을 읽는데 너무 재밌고 너무 신나고 막 너무 기쁜 거예요. 말씀 하나하나가 연결이 다 되고 너무 신나고 좋았어요. 이것도 너무 행복했는데 원장님 설교를 듣다가 어떤 음성 하나를 듣게 됐어요. 근데 오늘 그게 결정적으로 그냥 저를 완전히 놔줬어요. 그게 뭐였냐면 원장님이 그러시는 거예요. 하나님은 절대 치시지 않는 사랑이시라고. 사단이 잘못한 것도 내가 잘못했다고 하는 게 하나님이시라고 내가 너암 걸리게 해서 미안해 내가 너암 걸리게 해서 미안해 이상한데? 암은 내가 생각한 사단을 선택한 결과인데 사단이 준 건데 이게 무슨 말이야 내가 너암 걸리게 해서 미안해 예수님 미안해 내가 다 잘못했어 너 고생시켜서 미안해 너 아프게 해서 미안해 너 그때 그 사건 있게 해서 미안해 내가 다 잘못했어 그러시는 거예요 그래서 제가 다섯 살짜리처럼 엉엉 울었어요 왜 이제 왔냐고 나 너무 아팠는데 왜 이제 왔냐고 계속 우는데요 마음은 너무 기쁘고 좋아요 제가 다시 다섯 살 어린 아이가 된것 같아서 되게 오랜만에 행복해요 그리고 되게 오랜만에 어 되게 든든해요 나 혼자 아니구나 나 고아 아니구나 그냥 앞으로도 제가 하는 일은 전 그냥 예수님만 부를 거예요 뭐또 넘어질 수도 있겠죠 또 제가 뭐 실수할 수도 있을 거고 뭐또 사단을 또전또 선택할 수 있는 그런 사람이에요 근데 이제 두렵지 않은 거한 가지가 생겼는데 저한테는 자기 백성을 저희 죄에서 구원하시는 그 예수님의 이름이 저한테 있다는 거예요 그래서 저는 여기서 그거 배웠어요 예수님 부르면 그분이 오셔서 다 알려주신다 걱정할 거 하나도 없 저한거 아무것도 없어요 근데 그분이 진짜 다 하셨어요 우리 다 같이 그 예수님 만나고 다 같이 행복했으면 좋겠어요 저한테 해주신 거 여기에 계신 모든 사람한테 아마 동일하게 해주실 거예요 Did she meet Jesus? What did she do? nothing she just called the name of jesus this is a secret of being saved jesus promised us and the secret place of prayer where no eye but gods can see no ear 
but he can hear. We may pour out our most hidden desires and longings to the Father of infinite pity, and in the hush and silence of soul, that voice which never fails to answer the cry of human need will speak to our hearts. Amen. Jesus, no matter how sinful we are, can save us. He knows what's inside of our deepest heart. He knows every deed, every thought, every intentions that we make and we have. So, is it more helpful for us to be saved to just use our own deeds? No. For every earnest prayer put up in faith for anything, answers will be returned. They may not come as we have expected, but they will come. Amen. Because Jesus knows. Jesus knows every corner of our minds and life. So, this knowledge and experience of faith is coming to this pastor's wife. One step, another step, and third step. Closer and closer. Now, this year, let us see Jesus. Let us experience Jesus by calling upon his name. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, your love is so big that we can't even bear. Lord, through our ancestors' faith and walk the path, we learn so much things about today. Lord, we thank you so much for being there with us, being alive in our hearts. Lord, May you help us to be forgiven by Jesus' cross and blood so that we can honor you and only you and we can show the world that we are honoring you. Lord, Satan uses everything around us and in this world to make us misunderstand what you want to tell us. But Lord, may you bless us to look at only you, call upon your name, so that we can help saving other people in the world too. May you help be out of our bad habits. We know you have been helping us so much in every corner of our lives we sometimes forget you exist. So Lord, in this year, may you bless us to follow your footsteps. This world is going to end soon. There are a lot of different signs and different, different things that we can see. And all we have to do now, our obligation is to spread your gospel, this message to other people. The word is stomping upon the truth. But Lord, you taught us the truth from the Bible itself. So please, Lord, let us rise one more time. Please make us stand up still. And to believe you, call upon your name. And by that experience, may you bless us too. Please guide us to spread gospel to other people for this year. Lord, so that whoever we meet, they can hear love of Jesus. I pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen.